This is what Korea looked like in 1950s. And as of 2023, South Korea is one of the world's most developed country in the world, with a lot of high value adding industry. But this was not always the same. The real Korean miracle happened a few decades ago. And this came with a hefty price, and Koreans are still paying it. In South Korea, there are more people dying than being born. It has the highest suicidal rate globally. And on top of that, its population is shrinking, shrinking way faster than any other developed country. It is projected that at the end of the century, South Korea will lose more than half of its population. The same miracle that brought up South Korea from the ashes of Korean War is now becoming the cause of its extinction. But how? Most of the first half of the 20th century, South Korea was a colony of Japan. After World War II, Korea gained independence, but the country was divided into Soviet-backed North and United States-led South, immediately after it was liberated from Japan. And in 1950s, the Korean War happened, in which almost whole infrastructure of the South was destroyed, homelessness peaked, and economic growth went far below than that off the North. In order to deal with the crisis, instead of encouraging small businesses, the Korean government provided financial incentives, subsidies, and loans to Chebol to help the economy grow and become pillars of the South Korean economy. The Chebol was the group of ruling elite of Korea. The Chebol heavily invested in modern technology and laid the foundation of the Korean economic boom. The global cooperation were made and soon started to produce almost everything from modern-day smartphones to colossal container ships. But this needed qualified and skilled workforce, and this is the time when the education enthusiasm in Korean youth started. More and more young people wanted to be educated, and government happily provided high-quality education and facilities to the public. Just a few decades ago, only 22% of the population could read and write. But soon, it became the most educated country in the entire world, where more than two-thirds of young people have university degree. And this is when the Korean culture of hard work was created by the Chebol during the economic boom. These ruling elite started systematically indoctrinating their employees with complete and absolute loyalty to the company. And that the company comes first instead of your family and even yourself. This is how the Korean economic miracle began with colossal companies and cooperations that invest heavily in modern technology education fever which created a societal pressure on students that if they don't have a university degree they are worthless in the society and lastly the extremely exhausted work culture but if all of that was doing good with the economy then where is the dark side of it before further moving on if you have watched this video so far then please hit the like and subscribe button to support the channel initially it all seemed good there was money coming in the country and the economy was growing the Chebol expanded their businesses in many sectors and now has control over 85% of South Korean GDP. And just Samsung alone makes up almost 20% of the entire economy. But gradually, these Chebol learned the way to grow without hiring more and more people. And they only represent 10% of the jobs in South Korea. In the past, the demand of qualified and skilled workers increased due to rapid expansion of economy. But now, the demand is decreasing day by day as there are more and more students who are graduating from the university due to the education fever and it's extremely difficult for young Korean graduates to find a job. These young students do not want labor type work because these types of jobs have a low pay and they are looked down in the Korean society. In a society which is so much obsessed with the success in education, that's obviously all more frustrating, which resulted in high unemployment in the country. The government even also launched a program for fresh graduates to apply abroad for a job. And due to all of this, South Koreans don't want to have babies anymore, as the cost of living skyrocketed and high unemployment in the country. Developed countries usually have declining population, and it's a phenomenon that occurs in every country who has transitioned from an agrarian to rich and developed society. But South Korea takes it to another level. The fertility rate, which defines that how much babies a woman is having, is 0.81 which is far below the average population replacement rate, which is 2.1. It means if a country wants to maintain or stabilize its population growth, then the fertility should be at least equal to 2.1, which is 2.5 times less in South Korea. This is a population projection chart in South Korea. 
As you can see at this rate, at the end of the century, South Korea will lose half of its population due to population decline. A survey in 2020 shows that 42% of South Koreans in their 30s were not married, and 4 out of 10 households in the country are single-person households, and women are also less willing to get married. Divorce is also a taboo. Women in South Korea face some discrimination. This makes women more hesitant to get married. And as South Korea is a traditional and conservative society, the country historically maintained a strict policy towards immigration and does not allow foreigners to live in the country. Although it's changing, and the country is now accepting more and more foreigners, so the country can keep its population stabilized. There is also less acceptance of single mothers in the society. In South Korea, single mothers face a lot of stigma and discrimination. According to a report by Human Rights Watch, there are an estimated 20,161 single-parent households headed by unmarried mothers in South Korea. The actual number may be significantly higher, as stigma leads some to conceal their unmarried status. Lack of social acceptance for unwed mothers and their children means they are more likely to be living in poverty and be socially isolated. The role of women in South Korea has been evolving over the years. According to a study published in the Asian Journal for Public Opinion Research, South Korean women are increasingly seeking professional careers and are more likely to believe that both spouses should contribute to their family income. However, societal expectations and personal values still play a significant role in shaping women's roles in South Korea. For instance, a majority of respondents in the same study agreed that a married woman's social status is dependent on her spouse's social status, and the children are women's business. However, public attitudes towards single parenthood are changing. A recent survey found that 31% of South Koreans accept having children without getting married. The South Korean government has also passed laws to combat social prejudice and discrimination against single parents. Government is also trying to encourage birth rates, which are historically low in the country. And the most fun part is that the government is spending $12.5 billion every year on childbirth, but the birth rate is still decreasing day by day. The government pays more than $700 to the parents of newborn baby. But the worst is that the government continues to opt for this path, despite that it does not work. In rich countries, low birth rates are due to social and cultural factors and less to do with the economic problems. Wealthy parents tend to spend their money on their children and therefore want fewer children. It is astonishing that the miracle which helped South Korea to become the most prosperous and technologically advanced nation in the world has now become the cause of its slow and painful extinction. And if you like this video, you probably want to know about how Japan is dealing with its own shrinking population. And for that, click on the right video. I will see you there.